In our video today, we're going to be looking at the UK Constitution. Now, the UK has an uncodified constitution. Now, this does not mean that the laws and the practices of the constitution are not written down. It just means that they are not written down all in one place in one document. In fact, they are written down in several places. The main places they are written down are statute law. Now, statute law are the, is the acts of parliament that are passed in parliament. And this is what makes up uh, part of the constitution to do with, um, for example, the parliament acts of 1911 and 49, which limited the power in the House of Lords. So anything to do with the constitution that is passed as an act of parliament is part of statute law, which makes up the UK constitution. A second part that makes up a large part of the UK constitution is common law, which is cases of um, law as they are brought in courts and as they happen. So, for example, precedences and um, what, what happens in the courts and how the judges pass laws. Um, so, an example of common law would be royal prerogative powers, which um, which the Prime Minister has at the moment, which used to belong to the Queen. However, these powers are now being passed to um, to the the Parliament as a whole, so that one person does not have all of these royal prerogative powers. So these used to include things like signing treaties and going to war. However, we have seen um, from Tony Blair's vote on Iraq that prime ministers have set a precedent of having a vote on laws and we have also seen that um, there was an intention of having a vote on TTIP, the treaty between America and the UK. However, since David Cameron is no longer our prime minister, we do not know if Theresa May intends to have votes on treaties and we can only find out in the future. And this royal prerogative powers being passed to Parliament as a whole brings us to the next point, which is conventions. Now, conventions are what happens over a period of time and how people build up what they're doing. And so, for example, it's a convention that all people in government vote with the government. That's collective um, responsibility, collective ministerial responsibility. And this is what makes the government um, seem responsible. The next part is works of constitutional authority. Now these are books that interpret the constitution and help people who aren't that clear on the constitution because it's a very confusing thing, the UK constitution, it not being codified. Um, it helps them to um, interpret this, um, these works which are seen as authoritative. And the final part is European law and treaties. Now, since we've joined um, with other European countries to make a greater union, um, starting with the European economic area and moving right through to the European Union, um, increasingly European law has taken precedence and it, it has started to question um, parliamentary sovereignty, which we will have to talk about another time, but the European law has seemed to be more important and one way that Parliament have kept their parliamentary sovereignty through this is by incorporating things like the U European Convention on Human Rights into um, statute law um, by make passing the Human Rights Act. And um, it's things like this that um, can be quite confusing at times but make the UK Constitution a very indiv individual thing. Um, for example, it is one of only now three countries, um, three liberal democracies to have an uncodified constitution.